This video is me working through the week 8 tutorial for Comp284, which is the uh, UML design tutorial. Now, you'll have to forgive me that it's now getting on for almost 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so many apologies if uh, any mistakes creep in or you catch me tripping over my words. Um, the rather than show the whole of the text, uh, when, when I did the last tutorial video, I discovered that uh, perhaps the frame rate on the camera is not as fast. And so whenever I was waving that around, it was it was a little bit blurry. So I'll try not to move the page quite as much as I did in the previous video. Um, and so I won't go through showing you the text of all the questions. Instead, I'll keep the problem description up and I'll describe uh, what the question was doing. So we were presented with this particular problem description and uh, we're told that the first task is to read through the description and note down any key nouns we encounter. And in a moment, we'll decide which ones are going to be classes in our analysis class diagram. Now, normally on an exam, that first instruction, so I will just poke it onto the screen, that first instruction down here wouldn't actually be one of the questions because I can't really mark your writing down of nouns. Um, that's some notes to help you with the uh, the, the rest of the problem. Uh, similarly, uh, having read through the description, read through the designs uh, patterns on sourcemaking.com, well, I kind of assume you've already done that. Uh, typically speaking, in an exam, it will go straight from Here's the description to identify some number of design patterns that would be useful to, uh, for this. But for your answering the question, you will often found, find that is useful to note down the nouns first anyway. So this is going to be a recipe system. Uh, we're designing a system for an electronic recipe book. And so we'll just note down recipe book. The system has the following requirements. Each recipe, recipe, that sounds like an important thing, an important noun. It has a name. Well, name is a noun, but it, it sounds like a small thing. That's probably just going to be a field, um, probably a public field uh, in, in the recipe. And it includes a set of written instructions. Instructions, that sounds like an important noun. Uh, okay. And a set of ingredients. Ingredients sounds like an important noun. So let's write it down. A recipe is stored within the account of the user who created it. Some ingredients are basic ingredients. So basic ingredient sounds like an important noun related to um, ingredient. And if a basic ingredient is an ingredient there, well, maybe there's going to be some kind of inheritance relationship going on. And basic ingredients include the name of the ingredient, and quantity, unit of measure, well, let's write down at the moment. Let's just assume that's probably going to be a field for the moment. Um, okay, other ingredients can be references to other recipes. Interesting, other recipes, uh, that could be a reference to other recipes. Let's come up with a word for that. Let's write down compound ingredient just to give it a term in our little noun list. All right. These ingredients do not specify a quantity or unit of measure. All right. The system allows users to generate a shopping list. All right, let's write down shopping list of all basic ingredients required to prepare a recipe, including ingredients for preparing ingredients. So for those uh, for those ones that are references to other recipes. 
basic ingredients must be specified as gluten-free or lactose-free. So with, are they gluten-free? Are they lactose-free? Let's just write those down as possible fields within basic ingredients. Um, the system can check whether a recipe is gluten-free or lactose-free by checking whether the recipe contains any non-gluten-free or non-lactose-free ingredients, either directly or indirectly. Okay. When creating an account, the user provides their email address and a password. Uh, so a password will be down here. It'll, that'll be, well, it'll sort of be a, a field. It'll turn into a hash in the database. Um, email address. And in the tutorial, there was a kind of a good question as to whether we keep the email address as a separate object. Um, for the moment, for the moment, I'm going to just keep it as a field on account. I'll just assume it's going to be a field on account just for the moment. Um, when creating an account, the user provides their email address and a password. After this, an email, well, an email, that's an object, and it's sent to the email address provided. Ooh, okay, so an email has goes to an email address. Mm, yeah, let's make email its own kind of object, maybe. So let, let, let's say email uh, address and email, um, just for the moment. All right. with a link to either confirm or cancel the registration. Mm, let's suggest that registration is just a term for us putting the account in. Let's not, let's not write down registration, even though that's a noun. All right, users can maintain a list of friends. Uh, so we've got a little noun phrase there, list of friends. Let's write that one down. And when a user adds another user as friend, they will receive an email whenever that friend adds a new recipe. OK, so we've got to the end. That looks like our little collection of nouns. That's a reasonable little collection of nouns. Let's just set that aside for the moment. And let's move on to the next part, which is looking through this to identify identify design patterns you think would be useful in designing this system. Now, on an exam, normally this would ask you roughly how many design patterns, uh, sorry, this would tell you how many design patterns to identify usually, and usually it's going to be something like you know, three, four, five. Let's assume for the moment it's going to be five. And for each pattern, which classes are going to be involved and what role would they play? So let's just pop back down this feature requirements list um, because, well, this is set as an exam question, so the chances are some of these are set with particular patterns in mind and will leap out at us. Um, so the first one that leaps out to me, although this is kind of cheating because, uh, of course, I'd seen this before, I didn't actually, this is, uh, I think, I th um, I'm trying to remember whether, or whether I wrote or only edited uh, this particular example question. Um, never mind. Anyway, the first one that leaps out to me is this little situation where we've got ingredients that can be basic ingredients or compound ingredients. That is leaping out to me and suggesting uh, that we might want to use the composite pattern. What does it do? Uh, when you have an item that could be made up of parts that are of the same superclass. Um, at least that's how I'm going to describe it in this video. Uh, it's three o'clock in the morning, so I'm afraid my wording isn't going to be great. I, I imagine you can probably word that better uh, on the exam yourself. You'll probably feel more eloquent than I am feeling right now uh, at this early hour. Uh, so what is going to play what role? Well, um, compound 
ingredients can be made up of basic ingredients. And I've just underlined ingredients there. Um, and let's just put a couple of arrows to it at the moment and say common superclass. And it's quite useful to draw down a little UML snippet just to remind ourselves because we will need this a little bit later on. And so what we're suggesting is that there's going to be some kind of ingredient class. And so let's say that's, you know, abstract from which we have basic ingredients uh, but we also have compound ingredient and in this case it were referred to a recipe and so in this case it's a little bit different normally we'd just say that that's made up of one to many of those um, but in this case we've got a recipe in the middle so we're going to say recipe and so that compound ingredient Um, it's probably only going to be visible that way, but so it's that in, uh, compound ingredient uh, could be could be uh, made from a recipe that includes other ingredients. Okay, so that's one of our three patterns that we've just identified is the composite pattern representing this relationship between basic ingredients and recipes. Um, all right, what is another design pattern? Let's keep looking down this. In generate a shopping list of all basic ingredients, uh, including ingredients for preparing ingredients. Basic ingredients can be gluten-free or lactose-free. You can check whether it is. Um, well, I'm just going to kind of use my usual sniff that we, we've got a complex hierarchy of stuff that we are wanting to produce lists from and that we're wanting to produce checks from. And so if we've got this complex hierarchy, uh, I think it's going to be useful for us to use the visitor pattern. So, um, the visitor pattern, uh, this lets us, and apologies, I'm going to be ineloquent again just here. This lets us, um, uh, def uh, allows, allows collections or hierarchies to um, define a, uh, a a way that they can be visited by some encapsulated call, some visitor. Uh, and the collection hierarchy ensures all its parts are visited. And so how does this relate to our um, how does this relate to our requirements? Um, when producing shopping lists or checking a recipe is gluten free, we need to visit the 
child ingredients in the recipe, including children of ingredients that are recipes. Okay, and being late at night, I can't remember offhand the exact fragment of UML. Uh, it's a while since I had to actually sit these exams and remember the UML exactly uh, for the visitor pattern. Um, so let's work out what's a reasonable fragment of a UML to represent that kind of um, uh, visitor pattern. Well, what we're going to see is we're going to see that a recipe... is going to need to have a visit method and it is going to um, uh, ingredient will also need to have a, a, a visit method as well in fact um, so let's just kind of note that down over here ingredient will need to have a visit method uh, because the recipe's got to make sure that we that we visit the ingredients, which could be compound ingredients with other recipes. And that method takes a visitor V. Apologies if I've been getting off the screen a little there. And so that's going to be kind of a, a, a transient relationship with an abstract class. In fact, probably an interface rather than an abs abstract class interface uh, that would be, and let's call it ingredient visitor. And that's going to need a call, and uh, I'm getting a little bit muddy with uh, with what these are called because uh, one of these would be called visit. Um, let's call this one visited, just to make it clearer. Uh, that is going to take I, which is an, an ingredient. Okay, so. That's just a little bit, little UML fragment that might be useful to represent that one. Okay, let's keep on reading. Let's keep on reading. Uh, when creating an account, the user provides their email address and password. After this, the email is sent to the address provided. Link to confirm or cancel the registration. Mm, okay, let's keep going. The user can maintain a list of friends. When a user adds another user as a friend, they will receive an email whenever that friend adds a new recipe. I'm going to say this is screaming out to me that this is an observer uh, pattern. Uh, so what does the observer pattern do? Um, this lets an, uh, a set of observers register to be notified whenever an object of interest changes. Sometimes we do publish subscribe where we actually send out the uh, when, where we actually send out the message rather than just by the way I've changed. Um, and in this case, how does this relate back to the problem? Well, in this case, whenever a user adds another user as a friend, they will receive an email when that friend adds a new recipe. Uh, so friends are observers of their friends. recipe lists they are 
they are notified they're sent an email uh, when new recipes are added and being late at night once again i am just going to re-derive my uh my little uml fragment uh, so I'm being quite slow about this because I'm I'm talking through it as I go and I'm drawing little bits and trying to explain things as I go. Um, but so if we have a a user who has some kind of set of recipe list, well, for this we need we need uh, we're going to need some kind of interface that is our um, our observer. And we are going to need that to have a method on it called notify, public method called notify. And uh, the user is going to need to have a method um, that's going to uh, register their friend. So we're, we're going to have to uh, have a register uh, recipe list recipe listener maybe and that is going to take O which is an observer and it will need to contain um, some number of these zero to many and well the users being the thing that is uh, is being notified um, I guess we could say that they, the users are themselves an observer and put an inheritance relationship there. Okay. All right. So we've got little UML fragments of how bits of it are going to hang together. Our next task was to do the UML analysis class diagram. And I suggested, first of all, just do the relationships between things. Put the multiplicities, the, the labels on them, and then we will dig down into uh, putting in the actual um, uh, the, 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 the three box version with the, uh, the, the, the fields and the methods a little bit later. Um, so let's start off with the ones we've already seen. So we've already seen that there's going to be this idea of an ingredient. Uh, we've already seen that that's going to be abstract and that from that we are going to have basic ingredient and we are also going to have uh, a compound ingredient which is going to have a, and let's just do it up this way. So an ingredient, compound ingredient, and that's going to have a recipe. And that recipe has a list of one to many ingredients. And from our visitor pat pattern, well, we know that the, there needs to be this uh, ingredient visitor. Um, we'll see that a little bit later on, but let, let's just mark across here. And maybe across here. We use the dotted line because there's a transient relationship. It's just in a method call. It's not, um, it's not a static relationship where there's actually a field referring to these. Uh, but so we're just going to say that there's going to be an abstract. Uh, oh, sorry, we said an interface, didn't we? An interface that we called ingredient visitor. Okay, so that was those ones. Uh, we could also put down our fragment that was around the user. I should really, uh, I should really label these. Uh, well, that one's called ingredients. If it's just in called ingredients, it's obvious enough. Don't worry about the label. 
um, but if it's if there's a particular role to it it's a good idea to label it uh, let's also put down the user let's pop the user up here and so a user now we happen to know that users create recipes and so users uh, sorry, diamonds, just suggesting there's an aggregation there, can create some number of recipes and each recipe is created by one user. And we said that there is going to be, uh, a user is going to have um, some interface. And what was it? It was recipe observer or recipes observer. And so it's going to maintain a list of those. And uh, a user, we were going to suggest, is itself a recipes observer for listening to notifications that your friends have, have added particular um, have added particular recipes. Now, over here, we've still got, let's go back to our nouns. This is where our nouns come back in and uh, start to be a bit handy again because that's put a bit of a fragment, but we've got some things that aren't appearing on here. The recipe book, well, that's the system. Let's, let's not worry about writing that one in. Instructions. Recipes, they don't just have ingredients. Recipes also have a set of instructions. So let's go instruction. And they could have one too many instructions. And each instruction, well, we're going to assume it's in one recipe for the moment. Uh, all right. Uh, shopping list. Shopping list, well, we can generate those. And those shopping lists are lists of basic ingredients. So a shopping list. is a list of one to many basic ingredients. And those are generated, but they, they, they're generated for users, but we might or might not, uh, let, let, let's put the relate, let's put that relationship in. And so in this case, we're gonna need to, uh, to label it and we're gonna say created for one user and there might be many of them. In this case, I've been putting visibility arrows on here to say that um, you can navigate from the shopping list to the user. Well, there's no good reason why you shouldn't be able to navigate from the user back to the shopping list they created. So let's not put a, a navigability arrow that suggests we can only go that way. Let's, let's leave that one open that we can go both ways. Uh, all right, what else have I not got on here? Email address. A user we said has a, has email addresses, and that email address. Well, let's see. A user could have many email addresses, but we're going to assume that an email address only belongs to one user, and so let, let's label that belongs to. Uh, what else? Email. Well, emails, those are going to be related to email addresses. And so let this one sent to. And it's sent to, I'm going to assume this is just sent to one email address because um, so far that's all we've needed to generate in this. Uh, sorry, that was poking off the top of the screen for a while when I wrote email address belongs to one user. Uh, use one a user could have many email addresses and so we could send many emails to one email address and a user also has a list of friends what, what are their friends well their friends are other users so this one here is going to be a And here I'm going to have to write in 
the label because otherwise that's not going to make much sense a list of friends and I'm just going to draw an aggregation diagram there um, just to kind of help help distinguish it so a user has a, a, a list of friends all right that now looks like I've done the associations for these particular features in here. What I haven't yet done is I haven't drawn the three box version showing some of the interesting fields that I've noticed that I'm going to have. But I've already written a lot of those down here. Um, so for instance, oh, I've missed out account. Um, many apologies. I've missed out account. Um, I'm going to assume that the account is actually the the, the user record on the, on the same thing. I mean, I'm going to assume that those are effectively a synonym here. I should probably write that down. We'll represent their account using their user object. Uh, but so basic ingredients, these ones need a name, a quantity, a measure, gluten free, lactose free. So let's uh, actually we've got room on the diagram here. As it happens, I can extend this out into the th three box version because I'm not cramped for space the way I might be up there. So what did I want? I wanted a name. I wanted a quantity. Let's say that's, uh, that's probably a string. Quantity, probably an in int. Uh, measure. What, what is that? Well, it's a measure. Uh, gluten free, which is a Boolean, and lactose free, which is also a Boolean. And those are the fields. And methods, haven't defined any methods for that one yet. Uh, what other ones did we want? We have, well, a recipe similarly has a name. Uh, I don't quite have room for that. But if I also recall, I need to put my visit onto recipe anyway. So let's now draw in a little cutaway diagram for the recipe. Let's now draw my three box version of recipe. And so this has to have a name, probably a string, and it needs to have this visit method. And so it needs to be able to be uh, visited by a visit V, which is a visitor. And likewise, well, ingredient also, and this is just the abstract ingredient. No, I don't quite have room to fit it in there. So I'm going to say abstract ingredient. Needs to have visit that takes a visitor. OK. Looking at that, that's most of these. Oh, I haven't done my uh, my one for user, so I would need to uh, also write down. Well, let's put the recipe observer one up here, and write down that this one needs a notify method, and um, in this particular case. Because I've got that list there, I'm going to assume that that means that there is some way of adding these recipe observers into that user list. And so just that will be enough for the moment to represent my observer pattern. Uh, so that I can move on to the next section and not make this a very, very long video. OK, so that was my UML analysis class diagram for the recipe problem. Uh, what did we ask for next in here? What we asked for next, uh, analysis class diagram, a state diagram showing the states a user account goes through from initial registration to use. Also include a cancellation state. 
Um, so the key part of this is when creating an account, the user provides their email address and password. After this, an email is sent to the email address provided with a link to confirm or cancel the registration. And what we came up with roughly in the tutorial was that this means you've got the account that could be in a confirmed state. Uh, we could potentially have a, 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 a cancelled state where the registration was cancelled. Uh, but that kind of implies we could have an unconfirmed state. So we could have an, uh, let's call it, say, we'll, we'll call the state unverified. And that this is our start state. And in this state, what we're going to do is we're going to send a confirmation email. Apologies that my, my handwriting there is not terribly legible. Uh, let me sharpen my pencil and let me draw the next box bigger than that. Now, what happens? Well, the, it's, the email uh, uh, is sent to the email address provided with a link to confirm or cancel the registration. So this suggests to me that there is a transition that the user can click on the email and confirm their, uh, their email address is correct, in which case let's go into a state and we'll call it verified. Or they could uh, click the cancel and go into a state called cancelled. And we had a little bit of a discussion as to whether you could ever leave the cancelled state, whether you would reuse these things if someone re-registered or whether that would become an end state and that was kind of left as a you know it's kind of an interesting design question for designing these things um, but it's not a matter that we're, we're going to delve into um, so far as writing as creating these um, state diagrams is concerned uh, the other thing that was suggested was that uh, perhaps and I suggested doing this in a different color um, Someone suggested it might be a nice feature also to add a way that you can go from verified to cancelled if the user cancels their account. Um, and I suggested, well, just note on that, this is one I added. Um, just, you know, if, you, if you're making an assumption, write down an assumption somewhere. Um, try to be reasonably clear about what came from the question and what is things that, uh, that you've added, uh, that you have added to this. OK, but so that's a very simple state diagram that just goes from uh, and deals with different states for our user account. Now, let's move on to the next one, which was to describe a UML sequence diagram describing the interactions that take place when a user creates an account. Include the case where it's confirmed as well as the case where it's cancelled. So a sequence diagram, we're going to need our user up here. And the user, they're an actor, so let's draw a little stick figure for them. And I'm going to assume that they are interacting with... Um, well, they're going to be interacting with the, the registration uh, uh, page, perhaps, um, the registration system, the web system. So let, let, let's just call it, we'll just call it registration page for the moment. Um, no, let, 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 let's call it, let's just call it recipe book. But it's the web part of the recipe book anyway. Um, Okay, and I'm also going to suggest that there is separately an email server that we are dealing with um, for sending out the emails. I mean, sometimes you might even uh, you might even put it out through something like Mandrill or um, one of these um, uh, a system 
system emails as a service systems to try and make sure it doesn't turn up in the spam box. All right, and so to start with, the user initially they, they they register so on on the website or wherever it is they register and let's not close that activity line just yet what does the recipe book do well what we want to do next is we want to send an email so we're going to send a message over this way saying send email to the user and this is going to then just return back a message saying you will receive an email dot 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 all right that part is done the email server is now going to send the user an email and at some point afterwards but so we'll say that this, this is now back in the back in the user's court and so at some point the user is either going to uh, click the confirm link or they're going to click the, can the cancel link and so let's draw a, one of those opt boxes alt and we'll start off with confirms and so in this case, the user confirms. Fix the confirm link. OK. That's going to need to be confirmed. Shall we, if you like, shall we, shall we put in the user database uh, or the user collection? we say well when that happens they've registered send email of user sorry I've drawn that too high up because that should be lower down than this call time flows down the page minor alteration send email of user and so we might actually go uh, create user uh, in fact, let's do that like so. Let's show the user creation using um, the standard notation for it. Okay, so we've created the user dot 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 returns. Send email of the user uh, to uh, to the user's email address, and that uh, email goes and then confirm would then be to tell the user now the user object in the in the system um, and I think we called it valid didn't we so let's say set state validated And we're done. And we'll probably want to send a welcome message. Alternatively, so if they cancel, so alternatively, what might happen is the user cancels into the recipe book in which case and well depending on what we do we probably go set state cancelled or we could if we really wanted to except that's not what we showed in the diagram we could just do destroy 
but in fact we, well, we said we'd do set state cancelled so let's set state cancelled and then let's say you know sorry to hear that So there's our actor and there's our user record over there. And so this is now reasonably well showing what goes on in the um, in, in the sequence diagram of registering. I do have this confusion that I've got an actor here called user and I've got a class over here called user. Um, I could probably tweak these things to, to make that a little bit clearer, but it's now 20 to four in the morning and um, so I'm a little bit sleepy to do that. Um, so that's reached the end of the exercise. Um, hopefully that kind of helps uh, take you through the design exercise. And uh, when you do this on the exam, you won't simultaneously be trying to record a video as well.